Welcome to this new webinar. This time we're going to talk about the BCG matrix. The BCG uh, matrix is one of the most popular used portfolio analysis marketing notes. It's really famous. All textbooks, all study books talk about the BCG matrix or have examples of it. Uh, and uh, I have to be honest that a lot of times when I see students or people using the BCG matrix, not every time uh, it, it's being used correctly. Uh, let's dive into the model. It was invented in 1968 by Bruce Henderson of uh, the Boston Consultancy Group. So the BCG matrix, it's a portfolio analysis. Just as we know the General Electric matrix or the MABA uh, matrix, uh, the BCG matrix is a portfolio analysis. It's being used to, to plot your portfolio in a matrix and to see in which uh, business units or in which, pro which product market combinations you have to invest in. So it's the purpose is to make investment decisions. So the two most important subjects which you can plot in a portfolio are business units or strategical business units or product market combinations. So these are the things that you can plot in a portfolio analysis. If you search the web you can see thousands of different models and i have to be honest not all these models are correct this is not a correct model uh, this is maybe or so a model which you can use it's being drawn like this uh, it's being drawn like this it's being drawn like this it's being drawn like this with totally different uh, than the others that we saw and um, or without any figures uh, thousands and thousands of models now now let's have a look at this bottom here. You see the circle around it. It's saying market share. Please remind that it's not the market share which we draw on this x axis. It's, uh, it's supposed to be the relative market share. And this is a totally different figure than a market share. So please never use the term market share at the bottom of your BCG matrix because it's not correct and things will won't be plotted in the right way. So how do I use the model and what, which is the correct model? Uh, let's have a look at that. I always like to draw and if you look at the original textbooks uh, or study books, the originals, you always see a model like this. You have the y-axis and the y-axis tells you the market growth. And the model states, but please bear in mind it was invented in 1968, that you have the high market growth here and a low market growth there. So low is below the middle line and high is above the middle line. And you have the X axis, uh, which is underneath. And this is what we call the relative market share. On the right side, it's low and on the left side, it's high. The figures. So the center of this X, uh, X axis tells you 1.0. This is an index. Uh, so it's been indexed. So you don't use any percentage uh, on this axis, but a 1.0 in the middle and a 0.1 on the right side and a 10 on the left side. So the center uh, of the market growth, it's stated in 1968 that 10% is an average. Now I have to be honest, and this is one of the cons about this model, 10% market growth nowadays is pretty high. So um, you might wonder why is the average 10% because they had to name a figure. But of course, it, it's depending on which market we're talking about. And this is another con of this model. Um, but again, we have to respect the model as it was invented. So 10% market growth was an average. Now on the high side, we have 20% and on the low side, obviously 0%. So this is the basic starting point of your uh, of your model. Now, now we know that uh, every aspect has a name of this model. So on the right below side, we find the dog position. Your product market combination or your strategical business unit has a r low relative market share and it's in a low growing market. Uh, above the dogs, we find the question mark or also uh, often mentioned wildcat business. It's the question mark. It's okay. So you have a low relative market share, but you're in a high potential market because it's fast growing. So this is a really interesting uh, corner to investigate. Now we have the star business. The star business means that you are the 
market leader in this business and you are in a high growing market, in a fast growing market. This is interesting uh, because it gives you a lot of image and it gives you a lot of credits for uh, being there as a market leader in such an interesting market. Now, in the left low corner, we find the cow business, the cash cow business. The name tells you cash cow, so you can cash out here and um, you can milk this cow uh, constantly because it's a, you are market leader, really comfortable position in the market, which is not growing that fast anymore. Uh, so this is interesting to keep uh, some uh, business units or product market combinations in this corner. Let's have a look uh, how this model works. As I told you, it's an investing decision making model. So you, you make investment decisions on this model. Let's start with the dogs. The dogs have quite some revenues, but your investment also counts. So you have to invest in these product market combinations and it gives you some revenues. To keep them there, you have to invest. And still they, do, they don't do any harm, but it's not really interesting because you have a really low market share and a really low uh, growing market. So on the end, the balance stays zero. So please remind that it's not necessarily a corner which you have to get rid of. A lot of textbooks tell you get rid of the dogs because uh, they only bother you and they cost you money. This is not definitely true. The question mark business. The question mark business uh, gives you some revenues but they cost you a lot as an investment. Why? Because you want those question marks to go to the left side. You want a higher market share. You are for sure that the market is growing, but your position is quite low. You have a, a low relative market share. So to get a high market share, you have to invest in these question marks. Otherwise, uh, the market growth will slow down and it will go down to the dog position. Now, the star business. Obviously, uh, they give you, give you a lot of revenues, but to be a market leader in a fast growing market, it also costs you a lot of investment. So balance wise, they don't really give you high revenues and they also cost you a lot. So zero is on the balance, but it's again, really good for your image to have some star business and some star product market combinations or business units. Now, the last one is the cash cow business. Obviously these give you the revenues. These give you a lot of benefits, a lot of profit and the investment is not so much because it's not a fast growing market anymore and you're already market leader. So you can lean back and just enjoy your revenues of these cash cow business. So this is the, the corner where you make the money. Now, how do we invest the money? What's the, co what's the combination of these four items? Let me tell you. You see uh, the, uh, in the graph on the top is a legenda uh, and it tells you that the, the black arrow is the cash flow. So this is where the money goes, which way the money goes. And, and the dash line is your uh, desired movement. Uh, let's call it that. So the money of the cash cows obviously goes to the question marks and to the stars. This is where the cash flow goes. Uh, because we have to invent in question marks because we want them to go left and the star business we have, we want these uh, stars to stay on top there uh, don't lose any uh, market share so you also have to invest in your star business and obviously the cash flow is coming from the cash cows we want the question marks to go to the left to do so we have to invest 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 to become a uh, star business because as you can see the star business eventually will go down. If you keep the relative market share high, then the market will, will ease on, will, will, will steady in some time and the star will go down and become a cash cow eventually. So you want this star also to go to the cash cow business because then it will gain you money. And uh, uh, as long as it's staying up there, the star business won't give you any credits uh, in terms of money, in terms of profit, in terms of balance, positive balance, but it's good for your image. It's important for your image. And what about the dog business? Well, yeah, also some money goes to the dog business to keep there, but they don't cost you a lot because you have a really low market share and you have a really low balance. They are buying your products. And as long as they're buying your products, they are part of your family business. So dogs 
could switch over to become a star or maybe become a question mark or maybe become a cash cow. Again, in my automotive examples, if you have riders of a real small car and eventually they really like this small car, which is, for instance, a dog business, they could step in a larger car or a more family car or a bigger car or another car from, uh, of your brand. So they can switch over. So there's a really strong connection between, between these segments. So don't rush and, and tell everybody, okay, look, uh, we've got some dog business here, let's get rid of it, because that's not that necessarily the right choice. You have to investigate what's going on in these segments. The same goes for question marks and star business and cash cows. Now, let's look at an example and let's pretend as if we're uh, company X. So let's have a look at our example company X. Now, the standard BCG model tells us that an average market growth of 10% is realistic. I have to be honest, I don't know any markets that nowadays grow 10% as an average every year, every day, every month, depending on your model and how you use it. So, let's just take realistic figures. Let's use an Excel model. Um, in this Excel model, I've made a product market combination 1 product market combination number two, three and four. Let's pretend as if these figures are real or realistic. We've got the figures of every year. You can see in 2006 we had a market growth of 10%, in 2007 9.1, uh, 9 in these years there was a decline, etc, etc. Pretty realistic. And on the end we take the sum of all these figures of 10 years and we divide it by 10 and then we have an average growth in this market of 1.2%. Let's fill, fill this in. An average of 1.2%. Now the top we uh, multiply by 2, so we have 2.4 there, and a 0% on the bottom. Now let's have a look how our market grew in the last year to make sure on what height we are on this Y line. Because are we in a low growing market or in a high or fast growing market? Let's have a look. Last year we had a increase of 1.8% in the market. So we fill in 1.8% which is around here and then we have this left side. So we know for sure that we are or a question mark or we are in the star business. One of the two. It's depending on our relative market share. Let's have a look at our relative market share. We are company X and as you can see we have the market share here. These are the relative market shares. Now how do we calculate the relative market share? It's always our market share divided by the biggest player. So in this case I can show you this is our market share divided by the biggest player which is 0.7 which is an indicator. Please bear in mind this is not a percentage this is an indicator. We can fill this in the indicator 1 is exactly at the middle, 10 is really high on the left side and 0.1 is low on the right side. Now we had 0.7 so this is around here and then we have our coordinates for product market combination number 1. Now as I told earlier in this model we can plot all our PMCs or SBUs in the same model. But make no mistake you have to do this for every market because these are different business units or product market combinations. So they have different markets and different growth and also we have different relative market shares. Let's have a look at our model for market number two. Market number two is a little bit smaller as you can see and we have an average of 4.1%. So let's fill this in. 4.1% 4, 4 is our average. Now we have to look at how the market grew in the last year to make sure if this is high or low. This calculation tells me is 1% because it only went up for 100 units. So 1% I fill this in which is around here and then we have our relative market share. Let's have a look. This calculation tells me that I'm the number one player in this market so I'm definitely on the left side of the model. And with 90% I have a relative market uh, share of 1.1%. Now there's something interesting here. Because I told you in this example that you always divide your market share by the biggest player. But I am the biggest player. How do I calculate my relative market share? 
by dividing my market share with the second biggest because I am the biggest so the first actually the first biggest player is player 2 this is logical because this player 3 is smaller than player 2 so it's my market share divided by the number 2 player as you can see let me show you it's my market share divided by the second best which is 1.1 in the model now again 1.1 is an indicator, it's not a percentage. Now I've my I have my coordinates here, so this is my uh, market number two. Now we do the same for market number three, which is 1.6 average. So I fill in market number three, 1.6 average. The top is 3.2, so I and I've got my my growth here, which is 2.9 percent, which is way higher than the average. So 2.9 is around here and I've got my relative market share here I'm number six uh, I divide my market share by the biggest player which is six in this case so four divided by six is 0.7 and 0.7 is this coordinate as you can see this is a relatively small market the volume is only 200 for the biggest player and 140 for my company now let me get back on the sizes of these circles we have here in a minute First let's do market number 4 which has an average of 2 so I fill in an average of 2 and the biggest is 4 the highest is 4 and we had a decline of 1.4% now this is interesting because we don't have a minus 1.4 and this is one of the cons of this model is this model states that a market always grows every year it grows by 10% average and a decline is not even possible but still we have to be honest markets can decline so we have a decline of minus 1.4% which is beneath the lowest and we have a relative market share in market 4 we are under number 2 so we're doing well and this is 1 because 16 be divided by 17 is 1 which is the indicator and which is halfway so halfway we have our market share here relative market share and our uh, product market combination number 4 will be here which is kind of a dog kind of a cash cow but in a declining market now this is also why sometimes you find models which are different than the original model as I show it to you here some models have some lines with a minus as well so you can adjust this model to your likings if necessary so let's get back to the examples and let's get back to the presentation so as you can see these are your product market combinations and what is the desired movement of these uh, well we, can, we could say that market one and uh, market three should go to the left and let's hope that market number four goes up because that's the desired uh, way our uh, product market combination should go and we do so by investing with the money we have from product market combination two how to set up your bcg define your strategic business units or business units or your product com market combinations calculate your market growth I've told you how to do so. There are several methods possible. Standard, you use 10% as an, as an average, but 10% is absolutely not required or a holy figure, okay? So calculate your relative market share. There's also different methods possible, but the best way is to divide your own market share between the highest market share and a relative uh, market share of lower than one is low and higher than one is high. Plot your uh, business units and circles in the matrix and uh, the turnover, that's something that I didn't tell you yet, that the turnover usually d defines the size of the circle. So a big circle can be seen as a, as a product market combination which gives you a lot of turnover, whilst a smaller circle is a business unit or a product market combination which doesn't create high turnover. Uh, now make your de uh, investment decisions, uh, especially the question mark in the dog business as I mentioned before uh, really need some deeper analysis so the BCG uh, model has some assumptions the model takes important principles of the experience curve and the product life cycle since we are using uh, market growth on the left side this is a really important uh, measurement with which the 
product lifecycle also uses. The profitability of the cash flow are a function of the relative market share and the market growth, which kind of is strange, but uh, the model states that if you have cash flow and you invest it in, um, in question marks, then it, your market share will uh, rise. Okay, well, it's an assumption. Uh, fast growing markets are way more attractive to invest in than slowly growing markets. That's what the model tells you. If this is true, I'll leave that in the middle. And now maybe this is a, a kind of a nice bridge to go to the pros and the cons of the BCG model. Now, first, let's start with some positives about this model. Um, it's somehow obje objective because the figures tell you uh, this is the market share and this is the market growth. So we have star business here. Uh, nobody can argue with that because that's how the model works and that's what the figures tell you. Um, it's clear and straight to the point since it is so objective. So everybody's on the same page. If you look at the model and you plot your PMCs and your SBUs in there, then yeah, everybody has to agree. So we're all on the same page. Uh, it's easy to make. You can plot it in, uh, let's say, half an hour. You have all your business units if you have four or five. It's not so hard to, uh, uh, to put it on paper. And it forces you to focus on some uh, important issues uh, or some basics. Uh, it's a good starting point. It's interesting to plot your portfolio in there and give you some insights uh, how these portfolios are connected and uh, working with each other. So, conclusion, it's a useful tool uh, for your portfolio analysis. But unfortunately, there are some cons as well. Uh, let's dive into those quickly. Uh, it really neglects the effect uh, and the synergy of the business units. As I already told you, dogs can go to the question mark business and the question mark goes to the star business. And all these customers which are in all these corners are somehow connected. If you buy Apple products, um, it, it, you're in, in their ecosystem. And obviously Apple also has a BCG matrix. And um, if you get rid of dogs, because for instance, they are in Apple TV, let's say, as if that's a dog position, then um, you get rid of all these Apple uh, buyers, which are maybe really interesting buyers of iPhones or iPads or whatever. So. Uh, a high market share is not only a success factor. There are so many success factors which, which are really important to take to into, into account. And this model also uh, only tells you market share is really important. This is a success factor, but it's not necessary like this because a business with low market share uh, can be profitable too. Uh, why not? And a high market share does not necessarily lead to profitability all the time. So. These are really uh, things to take in consideration that market share is not such a holy grail. Market growth, same goes for that. It's not only the indicator of attractiveness of a market. If you have fast growing markets, obviously they are really uh, interesting, but markets which are really steady or don't necessarily grow so fast could also be very, very in, uh, interesting. Um, it's often a big problem to get the data of market share and market growth. Um, not every business has standard reports of all your competition, your own market share, uh, the market share of the competitors, and especially not within your product market combination. Because as you saw in the calculation, which we just did, we constantly have to take new data of different market share uh, to calculate our market share and the market growth. Not every business registrates this. There's no clear definition of what constitutes a market? Uh, what is the market? How do you how do you define the market, and how do the how do, does your competition uh, define the market? If you don't, uh, if you are not uh, using the same kind of data, this also can be really tricky uh, to make investment decisions concerning these uh, these markets or by how you define the market. Now, the model also only uses two dimensions. Um, this, uh, this really leads to self-fulfilling prophecy. As I mentioned earlier, look, the model tells us due to the market growth and the market share that we have to invest in our uh, question marks. So let's do that. Um, that's really straightforward. So the General Electric's matrix, for instance, um, 
uh, uses way more dimensions and way more criteria, which give you a much more precise definition and a portfolio analysis. Last but not least, the, the model really neglects small competitors, uh, which are often startups nowadays and which can grow really, really fast. It's not necessary if, if you are a market leader that these small, fast-growing startups can be a really dangerous competitor for you. It doesn't say anything about the competition, actually, this model. Sometimes you find uh, people who are also plotting the competitors in this BCG matrix, but uh, you have to figure out why, uh, why you should do that and how you can use that as a strategical tool. There are much more interesting ways to do a competitive analysis or a competitor uh, analysis. So, um, Armstrong and Calopy uh, have shown and proven that the, the use of the BCG matrix leads to lower profits and shouldn't be used anymore. Uh, this is uh, quite a heavy uh, statement. Uh, which was made in 1994, but uh, to be honest, um, in uh, 2014, the Boston Consultancy Group itself has acknowledged that the business model is kind of outdated and that the business world also is really changing fast and that's why they uh, reinvented the model. I will put a link below uh, this video and you can find it there, uh, all the topics and all the information concerning this new BCG model. I've got a uh, URL here as well, as you can see. Um, if you uh, follow this URL, you can read everything about this new model. So there is an updated version of this model, uh, which you might want to take in consideration. So I've told you a lot about this BCG model, and I hope that you can plot your BCG matrix yourself. Uh, it's Again, it's a model which is often found in all these study books, uh, so uh, probably you heard, heard of it of you, or you read about it. And please take the pros and cons in consideration, and please use it as it was invented originally. You can watch all my other videos uh, via the links below. Please watch my other videos about strategic models as well. And if you have any suggestions for a uh, webinar or a strategic model which you really like to have explained, then please leave your comments in the section below or if you have any other comments or likes or whatever, you can also leave them below. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel to stay informed for all the future webinars. Thank you for your interest.